Bill Nelson is an internationally known illustrator and sculptor. Garnering over 900 awards including gold medals from the New York Art Directors Guild, and was the first president of the Colored Pencil Society of America. His work has been profiled in, step-by-step -step graphics, American Artist, Communication Arts, Print, and Graphic Magazine. His award-winning illustrations, have graced the covers and interiors of TV Guide The New Yorker The New York Times Book Review Newsweek Time The Atlantic Monthly The Congressional Quarterly Rolling Stone, Playboy the National Review, and more. His advertising clients include, Epic and Columbia Records, Estee Lauder, Land's End, The Criterion Collection, Columbia Pictures, The Gore-Tex, International Campaign, David Copperfield, Reebok, Bola Wine, The Kennedy Center, Time Life Records, and more. He has exhibited in numerous galleries and museums worldwide, including the Norman Rockwell Museum, where he exhibited a series of big band illustrations created for the United States Postal Service. In 1970, Bill Nelson created the Lon Chaney Senior Portfolio, an exquisitely rendered series of 15 black and white illustrations devoted to Hollywood's beloved man of a thousand faces. The publication of this collection of pen and ink drawings marked the end of an era. Bill knew he had to face the daunting world of color in order to be considered a professional illustrator. Bill decided it was time to create a landmark piece that would introduce his new full color technique to the public. He chose Lon Chaney's clown portrait Tito Beppi, from the film, Laugh Clown Laugh. It was the pivotal piece that launched his career, garnering Bill a silver medal award from the Society of Illustrators. The art of Lon Chaney turned his world around. With one color illustration, his fear of color was gone, and a study of light and shadow had begun. The following is a collection of Bill's colored pencil portrait illustrations and fine art prints. Included in Bill's vast illustration portfolio is a series of dress dogs portraits. 
When asked about this somewhat unusual group of drawings, Bill said, I have always loved dogs, and think they are also handsome. So, how much more handsome would they be, if they wore stylish clothes? I decided to find out. They were a labor of love, and it was so much fun to put fancy clothes on animals. A la Beatrix Potter. And now, you also know what a fancy dress dog looks like. My gift, to you. In 2011, Bill returned to his roots, to revisit Cheney's makeup genius in a hardbound limited edition book, The Man of a Thousand Faces, The Art of Bill Nelson. Showcasing not only his original portfolio drawings, but also more than 50 brand new color and black and white illustrations, dedicated to Lon Cheney's artistry. In the foreword, Academy Award-winning makeup artist, Rick Baker wrote, as hard as Cheney may have tried to obliterate himself under ingenious makeup, Bill uses his understanding of the Man of a Thousand Faces techniques to create depictions of Cheney's most memorable creations that are eerily authentic and infused with the spirit of Lon himself. Bill's inner sculptor knows how light and shade can be played to create a desired effect or illusion, just like Lon Cheney did. Bill was commissioned to write and illustrate a book titled One of Us, The Making of Todd Browning's Freaks. The following is a gallery of the illustrations created for the project. Commenting about his portfolio of caricature illustrations, Mill wrote, Pushed portraits is how I define my approach to exaggerating the features and musculature of the human face and head, and has little to do with the overused term, caricature. While I do plasticize my subject, I in no way attempt to malign or denigrate. I do not view my role as judge and jury of one's character or of the life they are living or have lived. History will take care of that. But for the most part, I approach a personality as someone who occupies space on this planet, someone who must face life and death as we all must. Therefore, I chose not to attack or render them in harsh light, but simply to see them in a different and unique way. I view this technique as dignified and refined, almost quiet. I am merely an observer, viewing the way life has shaped them, and in many cases, left them in the end.
Artists who draw very well, do not necessarily possess the skills used in sculpting, which requires working in different techniques and materials, and, not to mention, dimensions. Illustrations are two-dimensional, created on a flat surface. Whereas, three-dimensional artworks occupy physical space. It's unusual for an artist to excel in two opposite skill sets, drawing and sculpting. But Bill has become masterful at both. On his excursion into three-dimensional illustration, Bill states, Over the years, I have been commissioned to create the likenesses of many celebrities, politicians and even book characters, in ink and colored pencil. Since I am also a figurative sculptor, I decided to take my exaggerated portrait drawings to another level. Looking beyond traditional two-dimensional art, and create three-dimensional illustrations for editorial purposes. In addition to a successful illustration career, Bill is an internationally recognized sculptor and ventriloquist figure maker. Inspired Works was born from the creative partnership of Bill Nelson and mechanical engineer and figure builder, Dan Lavender. This is the true definition of a creative team. Bill designs and sculpts the custom character head in clay, then ships the sculpture to Dan, where he molds and casts the head. Dan then builds the torso and head mechanisms, creating a smooth and flawlessly multi-functioning figure with moving eyes and blinking eyelids, raising and lowering eyebrows, mouth movements including upper lip sneer, and sticking out the tongue. The parts are returned to Bill for painting, costuming and wigging, then the finished ventriloquist figure is shipped to the customer. Bill and Dan were commissioned to create a ventriloquist figure, of God. When Bill told the client there was not a lot of reference material out there, he replied, God looks like Albert Einstein. Everyone knows that. The combination of Bill's uniquely sculpted and theatrically painted characters and Dan's imaginative animations gives each inspired works figure life. Their characters overflow with humor and charm and moves these ventriloquist figures out of the realm of utilitarian puppets into a rarefied place between artistry and automata. In a 2009 article for Dollcrafter and Costuming magazine entitled, What a Character, Bill shared his perspective on character design. With each figure, I attempt to create a personality that is warm, appealing, and vulnerable. I want them all to appear as though they have something to say and are about to say it. But, just what is a character doll? A doll with lots of character? Yes. A doll with an exaggerated expression? Yes. A doll with proper proportions? No. Not for me anyway. Faces loaded with personality became my favorite thing about doll making. Then I realized these were character dolls, as opposed to realistic dolls. With these character dolls, using the skull as a base for study wouldn't be necessary anymore. After all, I knew where the eyes, nose, and mouth went, and that became all I needed to know. First of all, character dolls are not usually pretty or handsome. This doesn't mean they have to be ugly, but they can be. Wrinkles show character, and there aren't any wrinkles on a pretty face. Crow's feet could explain a lifetime of smiles. More wrinkles around the mouth demonstrate a perpetual grin or sadness. They say our noses keep growing throughout our lives, so why not jump ahead a few years and make them big right now? And aren't larger ears always funny? 
How about bags under the eyes? They can convey age or fatigue. Or they can be humorous. What about slightly crossed eyes? They have a sweet, endearing quality. So much can be told through the eyes, and they must be allowed to convey what is behind them. Eyes that stare blankly ahead, with no life, or light, have nothing to say, no stories to tell. Character For me anyway, reflects the results of a life lived. And that face becomes a roadmap depicting the journey. Sadness, joy, stress, fatigue, and more, are all exhibited in the face. All stories are told there. Make the reading interesting. Like a book. You just can't put down.